First off, let me say that I don't think it's just a numbers problem. Of course, having enough numbers to fill vacancies, having sufficient hands on deck, that's the overriding priority in any health system. But I think that what we really need to also look at is the diversity of those numbers. So having a single pipe of supply in terms of talent is never a good thing. Whether it's medicine, whether it's finance, or whether it's government, diversity gives you quality through competition and the healthy clashing of ideas. I think that getting enough numbers, but having sufficient mix in those numbers in any kind of labor market is paramount. We built Hong Kong through free trade, but seeing that we don't actually make widgets anymore, we should be the first right ahead of everybody else to liberalize the labor market of service industries, which is 90% of our GDP after all. Um, and that is how Hong Kong can continue to innovate, to continue leading and to continue to play a renewed role in the Greater Bay Area for not just the country, but at least the region, if not the entire world. Let me give you a, an example from the business world. If you tell people you would only accept graduates from the top three schools locally, but not from the top three schools globally, then you better come up with a pretty good reason uh, why that may be, what is so unique, and what is so uniquely unacquirable that would lead you to that decision. We need both quantity and quality, but of course, both would be dedicated to the well-being of those whom you serve, whichever sector it may be. That's not about trying to give preferential treatment to any person or any place, but really giving a level playing field to everybody. I don't think we should be looking at deregulation. Medicine is one of the earliest professions to undergo a regulatory regime because of a specialized and unique set of competencies and skills that would be required to administer to a patient. But I do believe that there are more than one way to be a good doctor, to be of good service to patients. And so that is why we need to come up with the postmodern equivalent of, say, the Flexner curriculum reform uh, of the US back in the early teens of the 20th century. So we're now more than 100 years and we've used that century old system without too much fiddling. I don't think that it's really fit for purpose anymore. We already are seeing quite a lot of useful applications of AI and robotics. And what we do will only accelerate on that front. So for example, any kind of superlative diagnostic skill or competency that currently requires a human being, a specialist, may in not the too distant future be substituted, even improved upon by AI and robotics. Whether that's dermatology, pathology, radiology, these are the three most obvious examples. And for robotics, um, you get uh, the surgeons, or in fact, any doctor that does any kind of procedure, those are currently sort of providing an adjunct role. I don't think that you can replace doctors and nurses because they're a human element that is irreplaceable. But I do think that we as a set of professions would need to rise on that value 
added curve and provide different types of value uh, and then allow technology to replace some of the things that we are currently doing, but perhaps not doing quite as well as what machines could.